Have you ever wanted to start a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily and then distribute it everywhere and even earn money doing what you love. All in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit episodes right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Now, what's really cool is video podcasts are also now available on Spotify. And if you want to be taken seriously on social media, you need to have a video presence. And what better way to do that by connecting with people via your video episodes? With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's all totally free with no catch whatsoever. And ever since we discovered Spotify for podcasters here on Cut the Crap with Beth and Matt, we are easily releasing new episodes and distributing them to multiple platforms, and it's never been easier. We highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. And as soon as we moved in, there's like a, a water leak in the bathroom. It's not my fault. Like it was the other owner that had it, but it's my fucking house now, and which means it's my responsibility to fix it. So like I can, I can hold space and, and totally appreciate and understand the fact that like grew up with issues. Mom and dad were crazy with their diet stuff. You aren't genetically gifted. Like we could put all the obstacles in front of someone that's not your fault, but like, it's your life now. It, it is your, your responsibility hundred percent to handle that. And then ironically, when we start to take ownership and execute, it's crazy what gets out of our way. People don't realize though, the, the magic that happens when we take radical ownership and accountability and dive all in on our actions. And it's like magic happens quite literally, like we all see it. But too often, I think it goes back to too many people are outcome focused versus action focused because we can't control a lot of the specifics of an outcome, right? Like in weight loss, we can't control how fast it's going to happen, where it's going to come off at it compared to your best friend. We can't control that, but we can go all in on our actions. Then ironically, actions lead to outcomes. But our focus is just off. Welcome to Cut the Crap with Beth and Matt, the world's number one no bullshit health and fitness podcast. Are you ready to cut the crap with your diet and exercise, get strong as fuck, and build a healthy relationship with food? Then you've come to the right place. Let's, Let's go. go. If you'd like to support us in the podcast, join our Patreon where you get exclusive content, which consists of monthly workouts you can do at home or at the gym, monthly challenges that are either strength, habit, or mindset based and access to over 100 plus low calorie, high protein, family friendly meals. These are all designed by a professional chef who is certified in nutrition. These recipes are already in my fitness pal for easy fucking tracking. New recipes are also added each week. We believe that fitness is for everyone. So this is our way of getting you started on your health and fitness journey at a price most everyone can afford. So what the fuck are you waiting for? We'll see you in the Patreon. Jared. Hi, Sometimes. Jared. The real Jared Hamilton. Not the fake one. Not the Not fake, the fake one. one. There's a fake one? No, I just say there is because when I started my Instagram page, I just wanted Jared Hamilton. But some person who doesn't use his Instagram, who spells his name exactly like mine. So I'm like, fuck, what am I going to do now? Oh. But like my old handle was like Jay Hamilton 911 or something stupid. So I'm like, you know what? He's the fake one. I'm the real one. Real Jared Hamilton. So that's that's how that came about. That's, that's funny. That's like a throwback to the early Twitter days with Shaq. <laughs> Shaq was the real Shaq because there's all like that was when impersonators were just running rampant on Twitter. So that's, that's funny. funny. <laughs> I love it. Happy fucking New Year. Happy yeah, fucking happy New, New Year. Year. Jared is our first New Year's guest. Let's go. I'm pumped. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> awesome. So what's up? How was your New Year's? It was good. Uh, in true papaw fashion, because I am a papaw at heart. I just didn't want to go out and get all you know, boot scooting and all that good stuff. My wife and I stayed at home. I ordered five guys uh, burgers and played video games till one in the morning. So it was glorious. That's my type of New Year's. That's that right. sounds like my New Year's. Other than five guys, we just cooked uh, crab legs and steak. So and nice. played uh, what we play Call of Duty and Madden, I think. I'm on this big Red Dead Redemption kick. Nice. Because I'm a child, so I would play Grand Theft Auto for. Right. But, so, but one of my jujitsu training partners was like, "Bro, Red Dead Redemption is like the Wild Wild West Grand Theft Auto," and I was like, "Give it to me." So, so speaking of jujitsu, when did you start training jujitsu? It's crazy. I have like no sense of time. I feel like I just got started, but I had a Facebook time hop that said I got my blue belt two years ago, and then it took me three years to get it. So, like five years now. Okay. I'm like, I, I feel like I still suck. I haven't, you know, I barely, you know, back on the mats. And then five years later, it's just absurd. So about mm -hmm. five years. 
Gotcha. Okay. So do you feel pretty good? Like, do you feel like you're average now? Cause I know that there's a steep learning curve with jujitsu. In fact, when yeah. Jordan was on here, we talked like a half hour about just jujitsu. Yeah. So. so my one goal in jujitsu is just suck less. That's, that's, that's really it. That's but fair. you never get to the point where you're like good. So like my professor, who's a big world champ, black belt, been doing it for all forever. He goes, I'm mediocre. I'm okay. And he just slaughters people. So, but in jujitsu, it's like with every new level comes a new devil, you know, where like, yeah, I'm finally not dying in 10 seconds. Then, okay, in 15, maybe. Like, so I feel like it just, it, it, it's funny because it changes so much. Like I'll have, you know, I always say a bad day on the mats is still a day on the mats. So it's one of those things where as soon as you start to think you're like, ha, ah, I've got my, my gears working, you get your ass beat. About like a 12 year old. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> no kidding. No. Yeah. That's been doing it since they were five. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's absurd because jujitsu is one of the things like, I'm not going to say physics doesn't matter. I, I roll with a guy who weighs like 400 pounds and it doesn't matter. It sucks being underneath him, but there are guys who are a hundred pounds less than me who just spank me like nobody's business. So it's yeah. absurd. So a question for you about jujitsu, and I, I kind of want to go somewhere with this too. Um, I read something online the other day about jujitsu and it says the difference between a black belt and what's the first belt that you get in jujitsu is a blue belt blue. So the difference between a black belt and a blue belt is there's no differences in the moves they're doing. Just a black belt is just really, really, really good at them. And it can do them in different ways. And like, I think that was just puts a focus on like the foundations. Yeah. It's such a comprehension level. So uh, one of the best analogies I've ever heard with jujitsu progression is, uh, and I think this was with so many things, like it's be so easy to tie this into weight loss and transformation and all this stuff where it's almost like when you're going through white belt, you're like a child trying to form words like water water the water or whatever and then blue belt is you're starting to put words together i want water okay but it's still very broken it's like you're you're really good at regurgitating and it's i want water so the start of communication is there purple belt is where it's like hey can i have some water please now the the, the words and the sentences are coming together brown belt you're you're like Hey man, what's up? Can you go get me some water? Like while you're over at the bar, can you grab me a water? Like it's very, very, very mastered of the word, the, the conversation. Black belt, you're creating your own language. It's like from a comprehension level, it's not that you're necessarily doing anything different, but your comprehension level, your understanding and your effectiveness at executing is just getting better and better and better. But like my coach, my professor does the same arm bars I do. He does the same chokes I do. He's just way better at doing them against someone who doesn't want to get them mm. done to them. Love that. When we're talking about working out and strength training, right? We're talk we tell people let's stick with the basics and get really, really good yeah. at them. Your squats, your bench, and you know, pushing movements and things like that. So they're, we're not doing anything differently than we expect our clients to do. We've just been doing them a long time and we just got really good at them. Yeah, without a doubt. I agree with that hundred percent. So Jared, when did you become a coach and how did that like tell us the beginnings of the Jared oh, uh, goodness. Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> the Jared Hamilton Chronicles. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I've been coaching for for a minute. Uh, it's been like 11 years or so. My journey started in college. So I'm 31 right now. It feels so weird to say that, but I'm 31 <laughs> right now. Well, so first of all, I was an undereducated homeschool kid. So had no idea what I was wanting to do and, and really struggled with like learning as a whole growing up. So when it was time to go to college, I just went to like a basic community college because I had no idea what to do. And I'd never been inside an actual classroom before. So going to like a big boy university was just like terrifying. But I, when I was coming to the point of like, all right, what do I want to do with my life? This whole fitness and thing was pretty cool. The, uh, the idea of biomechanics was my major if we wanted to even call it a passion, I was fascinated by biomechanics. So I'm like physical therapist, let's just become a physical therapist and call it a day. So that's what I thought I was going to do. And then decided I didn't want to go, you know, 200 grand in debt and get a PhD in physical therapy. And I, as a person, I spent a lot of time in physical therapy offices because I got a lot of injuries growing up. So I, I kind of got the vibe of it, but it was nothing I was passionate about. So I started, but I thought like, I'll just do this. So I went and studied kinesiology, but then Throughout the process of that, I took like a personal trainer prep class. It was part of the curriculum. Found out I fell in love with personal training. I've always had this like little bit of an entrepreneurial side to me. So I put two and two together and went, wait, if I can 
do this personal training thing, make a little bit better money. I can schedule clients between classes. I don't have to have a normal job. Let's go. And that was where the start of my career, the start of my coaching career was. So I'm like maybe 19, um, 20, something like that. And then ended up falling in love with personal training. I coached for like three different gyms, had a whole bunch of stuff going. Like at the same, at one time I was working for three different gyms. I was Chad at GNC and delivering pizza. Like <laughs> this whole, whole wow. thing. Wow. Yeah. So you talk about all over the place. So like when people tell me about what, you know, the dumb shit someone at GNC told them, I'm like, yeah, because I used to say that exact same stuff. Like, yeah, chest boosters and fat burners are the key, right? So, but you know, personal growth is cool. So <laughs> right, got my in-person training business to a really good point. So I quit my corporate jobs, like a university gym, a YMCA, that stuff. I got rid of that. And so I was completely self-employed doing the personal training thing. It went really well. Uh, I thought I was going to do personal training forever, but I was doing like 200 sessions a month. So like that was my life, like 430A wow. to like 9P life. It was crazy. That's insane. Yeah, but I was there for it. But like, I'm not even kidding. I quite literally had a cot hidden at the gym if I wanted to take naps in the morning. Like what I did, because I also worked behind the desk at the gym at the time. And so what I would do though, is because if I had a client at 4.30 in the morning from 4.30 to 5.30, my next client wasn't until seven. I actually bought a cheap cot on Amazon and I threw it in one of the tanning rooms so I could take an hour power nap between sessions before the gym opened. Cause I don't think the owners to this day know about that. <laughs> so <laughs> I just hid the cot underneath the tanning bed where no one cleaned. So it was great. <laughs> and then that went really well. And it got to the point where that was, that was my income. That was my, my thing. And then right around that time, I found out about the, this online coaching thing. And I discovered this fellow named Jordan Syatt. And that's where that began is so my, the thing that was really fortunate for me is I didn't have to go through the learning to do the online coaching thing by myself. As soon as I started doing it, I found Jordan, Jordan Syatt and Mike Vacanti's content. This was back when like, to show you the timeline, I messaged Jordan on Snapchat asking him a question about content. I go, okay, is there such thing as too much content? If the content's great, is there such a thing as too much good content? And um, one thing led to another. And he's like, dude, I actually have this thing where I mentor other coaches, if that's your cup of tea. And I'm like, oh, that'd be dope. And I joined that. And then it was like a small group coaching program for coaches. And I loved it, had great success with it. He offered if I wanted to join his one-on-one -on -one stuff and I bit the bullet and did it. And we worked one-on-one -on -one together for the next four years. And it was great. Four and years, got, wow. Yeah, I mean, it was like, I'm so logical minded by the time I was broke and was worried about my mortgage payment. And, and I go, well, the first month I worked with Jordan, I made more back than my initial investment. So I always say Jordan paid for himself every month after that. So I'm like, why would I quit? Why would I stop? I just had so much success working with him. It was four years later. I'm like, oh shit. And then I accomplished everything with him that I set out to do. And then that's kind of where my progression went. Cause it went from like in-person training, then kind of, instead of cutting that cold Turkey, it was like kind of hybriding in-person training, online coaching, slowly dissipating from online coaching. that's when I hired my first assistant coach to help, help take over my in-person business because I was still getting inquiries and I didn't want to see those people not get help. And then fast forward, then I didn't take on any in-person anymore. Then COVID happened later on. And then I brought on my assistant coach. I was in person online and then we're a little more at scale now. Now I've got like six assistant coaches that work for me and everything's online. And that's kind of where it's at. Epic. Yeah. Crazy little circle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I always say six degrees of Jordan Zayat, you know, yeah. <laughs> his coaching tree. They always talk about the the Bill Welsh coaching tree in football and things like that. So now there's yeah. the Jordan Zayat coaching yeah. tree. <laughs> Absolutely. Like Kevin yeah. Bacon, you know? <laughs> 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 Jordan is one of the big names in online coaching and just in fitness. And then the other one that I've always looked up to was Lane. They've influenced so many coaches and, and just people in general. Yeah, no doubt. I love both of those fellas. Totally. So you were in the beginning of the online training world. Yeah. Like w when Instagram was like killing it and like the yeah, before TikTok was even a thing. And yeah, it yeah. was, it was at the very beginning of it. Yeah. People just took off their shirt and they got clients and sold programs just by doing that. Yeah. One nip slip and you're 10, 10, 20 signups and call it a day. So like <laughs> nip slip. <laughs> Janet Jackson all over again. Oh my. I love, I love Jared because he's no bullshit too. You no. Know? <laughs> no, no, yeah. Jared will fucking just tell it like it is. And I like that post <laughs> made the other day, everyone went nuts in the comment section. Oh, I lost like 400 followers overnight because of I that mean, one, but it's tell us about that. In like one or two days, I pissed off people in three capacities. I said, number one, one of the pieces of content I was making was the hook was weight loss truths. Most people aren't ready to face. So it's mm -hmm. already very blunt. And the right, the first one was uh, working out's not therapy, therapy's therapy. Yeah. 
I go to therapy. I'm the biggest advocate of that. Same. But to, but to say like, and my, the whole thing is like just yeah, inner child issues, childhood trauma, family issues. Just go work out, bro. It's the same. Like get fucked. That's not yeah. So we're, I said working out isn't therapy. Therapy is therapy. Mm-hmm. The comments on that was pretty crazy. Like, who are you to tell me what therapy is? That's like, who are you to tell me what math is? Like, it's pretty right. black and white. It's you know, maybe the therapists also that say <laughs> that that's not therapy. Like it's right. a good coping skill, but it's definitely not a replacement yeah. therapy. So yeah. Well, and then its own rabbit hole is, uh, I think there's a level of a lot of people who say working out to my therapy. It's no, it's their suppression. They just substituted alcohol or you know, overworking or distraction, but it may be, yeah, working out is working out is a much better avenue than drugs, alcohol, whatever, but emotional suppression is still emotional suppression, even if it has a in the short term, a good result. So that's what pissed everyone off the first. The second one, I said, hormones aren't your issue. You should be consistent for more than three weeks. And now the problem is people put so much, too much context with that. And they're like, because I mean, I'm the first one to tell you people I'm on TRT. Like I take, like my test is in the three hundreds by like, it's barely 300 by itself. But what the context behind that post was like, I'm not saying hormone issue, hormone issues aren't a thing. Like of course, hormones are a thing, but the usually the people complaining their hormones are the problem they haven't been consistent for more than four days. And then there's easy that they wave the hormone flag. I'm like, no, your middle aged menopause or more middle aged hypo or PCOS isn't why you're not losing weight. It's because every weekend you go on a, on a binge eating bender. So before we blame hormones, why don't we actually be consistent first? Because even like with the, when we coach people, like I, I, half of our coaching community are ladies with PCOS. Like if I had to, it wasn't intentional, but like if we look, put on a spreadsheet, at least half of people have either insulin resistance, PCOS, hypothyroidism, all this stuff. But it is crazy what happens when you maximize your calories while in a deficit, eating mostly whole foods, enjoying the foods you love in moderation and not binge eating anymore and heal all your inner issues and strength train. It's crazy what happens. So, oh, yeah. and that was the point behind the post. Cause I know Beth, then you messaged me. You're like, what the fuck? I was like, what is happening? And it's speaking from like, um, I'm a 50 year old woman, right? Who has actually blamed the lack of weight loss on my hormones at 42. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't my fucking hormones. It was the fact that I was never consistent and I drank like fucking fish. So just to read that to me, it's like denial or you're letting something like really like define you. You're, you're taking menopause and that is your fucking life. Why don't you try to focus on what you can control, Mm -hmm. which would probably help a lot of things, you but know, that's, that in my opinion, that takes away personal responsibility. Mm-hmm. It's the, the hormones. It's a very convenient excuse. I'll call it what it is. It's a convenient excuse. If you're using that to justify why you're not getting the results and you're not doing anything about your quote unquote hormonal issues. I'll talk with people all the time. And it's like, oh, I, I know I've got an underactive thyroid and, thing, and things like that. I'm like, oh, cool. So like, are you taking medication? Like, are you working on that? Like, no, I just I just know. You, you no, you know don't. Anything. You don't know. You don't. <laughs> a lot of them were like acting out of emotion and not mm-hmm. logic. Yes. You know, which a lot of people need to just take a step back and then, you know, stop telling a coach that I hate when someone says the mansplaining thing that drives me fucking nuts. Facts are hard uh, to separate from our feelings sometimes yeah. is really what it comes down to. Well, it goes back to what you just said is because then ownership is required. And mm-hmm. if you and I'm a full believer that when things aren't going very well. When people are making comments and saying the things they shouldn't, it's when they're validating bad behavior and mitigating their ownership entirely. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm an all or nothing person. Oh, I'm going to start over Monday. Um, Oh, that's just who I am. I'm not whatever, whatever it's no, you're absolutely validating your bad behavior and mitigating your ownership because it's really hard to say, this is me. This is my fault. I'm the one responsible because then we make good decisions when we do that. Yeah. Well said. Well said. It's hard when you're the one that's been holding yourself back the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. But that's when real change happens for most people. I was gonna say, that's that's when you change. And until you get real fucking honest with yourself, then you can stay stuck and keep spinning your wheels. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. <laughs> oh, more ownership. What the fuck? <laughs> and Beth and I always say this to each other is everybody likes the no bullshit messages that we spread until we say something that specifically applies to them. Yeah. hundred percent. I have to remind my, my, my coaching staff of that. Cause like you guys know how the game with clients get of a client is just not taking ownership or, or not taking things seriously. Sometimes you have to have that real talk with them and I'll say, Hey, no, be in, like straight up, like tell them what they need to hear. And they'd be like, well, I just don't want to come across too rough or too whatever I go. 
ask Connor. Connor handles all of like our coaching applications and sales calls and things like that. And I go, ask Connor. He asks why people, what about Jared resonates most with him? And everyone says they like how real and blunt I am. You can be like, Hey, no, you're not taking this seriously enough. Or, Hey, you're not getting where you want to be because you're not being consistent. You're just holding them accountable. That doesn't make you an asshole. Right. Radical accountability is such a trait everyone needs to have. It's ridiculous. You said you were going to do this thing. Why aren't you doing it? It's my job to make sure to check in to make sure you're doing it. Actions always have to line up with ambition. If if this is what you're going to tell me, your ambition is what you want to do. Our role as coaches and professionals is to hold your actions to that standard. Well, this is what you said you wanted. Did something change? No. Okay. This is what's required. It's, it doesn't get more simple than that. Yeah. Yeah. When I, when I was first started uh, moving online and, and getting clients online, accountability I, was something to me that was a, maybe a, I was doing it wrong as a coach. My idea of accountability back then was um, when somebody wasn't doing a workout, oh, it's okay. We'll get it. We'll do it tomorrow. We'll do it tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But as we know, that's those, we'll do it tomorrow aren't helpful whatsoever. And they're going to continue to stack up. Then you start having those hard conversations, but then you start seeing your clients get the real results. Your client retention improves and everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, ultimately is what serves the client, right? Like yeah, it is. I mean, it's, it's, we, we have a job to do to, to help these people. And the reason they're here is because if we break it down, they're not going to do it on their own. If people knew that they could do the, the, get the result on their own, they wouldn't get coaching. Right. So, it, and if we're not doing our job to make sure and hold them accountable, give them the blueprint that they need in a way that serves them, then we're not doing our job. And that's unethical in my opinion. Yeah. That is such a phenomenal point because everybody knows how to lose weight or do whatever. They know what they should be doing. So why aren't they doing it? And I agree. All the stuff we coach and things like that, you can get all that information for free out there. And I encourage like, please go out there and try this on your own. If you can't figure it out, then that's what we're here for. But also we're going to help you get to the root cause of what you know what to do. Why aren't you doing it? That's what good coaching is. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's not the X's and O's Mm -mm. showing them where to look, but not telling them what to see. I mean, it's very rarely, it's very rarely the information, right? Like everyone Mm -hmm. knows, like just between the three of our socials, there's your answers. I had someone reach out to me a couple of years ago. He said, Hey Jared, I just want to let you know, I've been following you on Instagram and I lost 70 pounds. And I'm like, dope. Hell yeah. From, from, from just free Instagram content lost all X amount of weight, which I thought was dope. So we got on the podcast and talked about it, but the, the reality is most people aren't going to do that. His problem was strictly informative. It was, you have the wrong information. Here's the right information. And he was, and he knew how to apply it, but that's such the minority of people. Most people have the information they know what to do, but then they just, it, they, no one's holding them accountable. They don't know when to plug and where and how, and then the nuances. And then there's no third party holding them accountable because when left to their own devices, they sabotage, they ruin it. They say, oh, I'll start tomorrow. It's fine. And then tomorrow yeah. never comes. Yeah. I will say to that note too, there's a lot of information out there too. So probably yeah. with that guy that you were talking about, he just didn't know what to trust because there's a lot of bullshit out there. And I, mm-hmm. I hear that a lot of, uh, on coaching consultations. It was like, I just, I I've done keto and I've done intermittent fasting and I've done weight watchers. And I thought that was what I was supposed to do. And then it didn't work anymore. I, I just, and then I heard about this calorie deficit that you talked about. I don't know if I can believe in it or trust in it because I've been burned so many times, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I hate the misinformation that's out there. Just so frustrating. There's too many cooks in the kitchen nine times out of 10 too. Like there's a, there's a gentleman I do jujitsu with and he's a stereotypical trendy dieter who's been trying to lose weight for the past. I remember he joined, he he joined one of my like either low, t- low ticket or like free programs like five years ago, but would just is a diet hopper. Like I'm gonna do this for three weeks. Oh, I didn't lose any weight. I'm gonna do this for two weeks. This and that kind of thing. And we were talking the other night and he goes, well, I read this and it said that this food goes straight to my belly fat and you can't avoid it. I read this study that said like calories aren't the same, or I read this and said, I need to do this type of cardio and cycle this. And I go, bro, first of all, half that bullshit is fucking wrong Two, none of it's unsustainable for you. So even if it was right, it's not practical. And number three, you're listening to too many people without context. That's a problem. Actually, that's, that's a fucking epidemic. (laughs) Absolutely. People are just even if they have a coach, right? They're still fucking searching. They're, yeah. they're still on TikTok. Like, I heard this. What do you think of this? What are you fucking doing? No. Stop. I had a client one time where I was very blunt with her. She was, she was coaching and she was doing well until she got drifting is what I like to call it. And she would send me hour long YouTube videos. And it's nothing, but like we all get how marketing works and how like, you know, thumbnails and hooks and copywriting and all of that. And it was like how I ate 10,000 calories a day and lost weight. 
like it was something stupid like that and a crazy thumbnail with like all the food everywhere. And she sent it to me and she's like, Hey, what do you think of this? Why, why is she able to do this? And my weight loss is so slow. And I basically said, Hey, she's wrong. This is clickbait. I'm not going to watch an hour long video. You need to stop fucking around on YouTube. <laughs> like, and I was just honest with her. Because I go, this is causing you to sabotage. Uh-huh. I go before, before sabotage is drifting before drifting is uncertainty in belief systems. And this is causing you to, is causing you to lose a little bit of your certainty with what we're doing is the right thing. And then your mind goes and builds this narrative of, Oh my gosh, what if this is wrong? What if she can, what if I did da, 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 then all of a sudden you sabotage and it was all for marketing clickbait and YouTube ads. Mm. So fucking stop, put a boundary with yourself. Get the fuck off of YouTube and go to sleep. <laughs> right. <laughs> Probably happening late at night in bed anyway. That's funny. That's funny. I think more and more, everyone needs to look at things through the lens of like the oh, a completely well-rounded, complete approach versus yeah. so much of the industry. It still blows me away. Every time like I think the industry is getting to a good place, it's like people still think carb store fat. And I'm like, are we still in the 60s? Yeah. Like 50s and 60s where like Arnold was telling people that is where all this bullshit like came from. And it's, and I'm like, I made a post, I think it was last year that pissed a bunch of people off. It was, I think, I think I, it was um, that if you, carb store fat is like, that's is like the equivalent of the earth is flat. Like it's, it's, <laughs> it's the same thing, but it still blows me away. So I, I think having like moving to that well-rounded approach is, is such a big, uh, such a big thing. Mm-hmm. People, there's coaches still telling people that not to eat fruit. I had this person the other day was like, doctors. My nutritionist told me to only have one cup of fruit a day. I'm like, your fucking nutritionist is a fucking idiot. Like they were probably a (laughs) one one hour certification nutritionist is is probably what they were. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't I don't understand it. Like people tell me what like their doctors say, and it it just blows me away. I'm like, you literally told a 400 pound woman to eat 1200 calories. Get fucked. That's Mm -hmm. not okay. People or jumping yeah. people right into weight loss surgery without even like getting lifestyle changes first. I've even seen doctors recommend gaining more weight be, so they can qualify for the surgery. I've I'm heard like, that too. What, like, what? What's wrong uh, with you? You need your license revoked. This person is already very unhealthy and you're encouraging them to be unhealthier just to exploit the insurance companies. Yeah. Like I like it sucks that you know insurance has to say in that for sure, but like lifestyle change, the, the weight loss surgery isn't going to be successful without the lifestyle change anyway. But th- for that doctor, maybe that's a good thing because they keep coming back. Oh, absolutely. Like, I'm not afraid to say it. No, absolutely. I always, I always tell people like, oh, keep in mind how everyone you ask for help from how they make their money. The, the mm-hmm. doctor is going to get it with surgeries and medication. Um, the coach is going to do a holistic approach. The physical therapist is going to be through some more holistic stuff. A therapist is going to be through healing inner, inner work stuff. So just remember that whenever, like I had a client back in my, I trained in person. She uh, woke up one day and she couldn't go to the bathroom. And so she in, immediately went, cause her, it was something wrong with her back. And she, she immediately went straight to the ER surgery. So spine surgery the next morning because she couldn't go to the bathroom because her back was whatever. Well, when I have issues like my back or my shoulder, I go to a Cairo and like do some deeper, deep tissue work or physical therapy stuff. Cause I don't want surgery. And I was talking to my, my Cairo about that. Cause he's done some stupid work with my shoulder and my back issues. And he goes, Oh yeah, that's two adjustments. I could have fixed that. Like from the, the same kind of thing, but it goes back to people not realizing who the, how the people make their money. They're asking for help from, you know, if someone comes to you guys or me and asks for help, we're going to coach you. Cause that's how, that's how we help people. But if, the same person with the same, let's say weight loss issues goes to their doctor. They're going to put them on Adapex and go to weight loss surgery. And then it's, 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 it's a, it's a big issue. Yeah. Now I will say, I, I, I know that most, I think when you do get weight loss surgery, it is a requirement that you go through the mental piece of it and the, the RD piece of it for nutrition um, education. But I just know so many, those pieces that are in place, they just don't take those things seriously. It's just a formality no. that they just, they just check the box and then move on. Yeah. There's no, um, there the, for most, there's no like offboarding. Like we hear like onboarding or on-ramping something, but yeah. there's so many times where they'll have that surgery and they just say, here's a pamphlet, have fun. I even, ha- I have an RD on my staff. Like one of my coaches is an RD and she was telling me the intricacies of like going to school and all the, the clinical work and all of that. And half of it's a joke, like half of it, half of it's a joke. And half of the clinical side is a joke. Like even with hers, I can't remember what school she went to, but she's got her RD. She's fully licensed and everything. She goes, oh yeah, my, uh, my, the, whatever the, 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 the clinical was, is they just had them cooking food for old people, like in a nursing home. And it was like, that's, there wasn't like, there wasn't like, they weren't getting into into like building, having conversations and consultations and really educating them. It was, no, they made us make them food in the, in the kitchen and the, for the, the, for the, the facility, it was like free work. So they treated free work. Yep. I was there, right. 
Yeah. And, and like, that's the thing is it, it too much of it's like that, unfortunately, but um, it blows me away. So many things like, like, let's say bariatric, there's not even a, an education system post that or enter that to really get people to understand this. You know, could you imagine like if someone put like one of you guys in charge of like, all right, this person just had bariatric you're working with it for the next six months. Like that might have some possibility with it to at least guide them in the right direction. But otherwise most of it, they don't, they say, here's a pamphlet, go fuck yourself, have fun. See that's yeah, this is where we need to be working together with these people. You know, Mm -hmm. they need to stay out of, stay within their scope of practice. Like the doctors that have like 19 hours of nutrition coaching. If that's right. <laughs> Not even one full credit hour. <laughs> right. You know, and stop telling your clients to do keto and eat 1200 calories and see you later. Yeah. We're not saying these things to disparage doctors. They're great at what they do, but most doctors and things like that, there's a lot of doctors out there on the internet that will tell you, I don't like, no, I'm a highly qualified doctor, this and this and this, but I received like five hours of nutrition education. You get more than that in most certifications. Hundred percent. I and I, I know a handful of those doctors who will say, no, most of other doctors are fucking degenerates. <laughs> like it's yeah. they're terrible. But I think there needs to be something. I just don't know what how that would change currently. I think just our education system, period, going back to elementary school is something we've talked about here on the show too. Um, just needs to be reformed. We need to be teaching nutrition and fitness in elementary school. Phys ed, I, I asked my son who's in seventh grade, he's doing phys ed this uh the semester and what what they're doing, they're just playing sports. They're not like, like, that's cool. Sports are great. But first of all, that's not the only way to be physically active and fit and things like that. And not everybody's into sports and they're not teach. they're teaching them how to like, they're playing baseball. They're not teaching them anything. They're playing basketball and phys ed. And they're, I come to learn they're he has a nutritional science course, which I was really excited for. Um, it's shit. It's junk. Like <laughs> they're not teaching him anything I'm like, okay, here we go. I think across the board with just being successful in life and with this kind of stuff to be a functioning human, I think the whole education system needs overhauled. The fact that you you can go to school and know the Pythagorean theorem, but no one knows, no one knows gets into investing, how how something like mutual funds work, how to balance a checkbook, how to go make money. There's no entrepreneurship classes, basic fundamentals of communication, persuasion, sales. Like I think that should be all in school. And then on top of it, biomechanic class. So you know how to bend over without hurting your back, how to pull things, how to push things, how to what whatever. I think those kind of things would just overhaul an entire education system. This might upset some people, but it's my belief that the school system, especially elementary and high school is designed to create good workers. And yes, men follow the rules. Don't think for yourself. And it doesn't encourage that entrepreneurial uh, spirit for sure. Um, because capitalism wants, you know, good workers. They they need workers to exploit for low wages so they can profit and things like that. I mean, that was a, there's a direct quote by Rockefeller who created it. He says, I want to, I don't want a generation of thinkers. I want a generation of workers. End quote. <laughs> like the dude said it straight himself. And that's why I was an awful student in high school. I was because I rebelled against authority. I didn't accept the bullshit answers that they were giving me. If I saw something that they were doing, teachers did unfair shit all the time, right? I would call them out for it. So I was always getting suspended and in detention and and things like that. So I, I had D's and F's in high school. I'm not afraid to admit that. I literally got expelled my sophomore year of high school um, because I was rebelling against all the bullshit that I saw out there. Um, I didn't, I, I refused to just fall in line with everybody else. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and that's the thing is I grew up, I grew up a, a homeschool kid. So like, I didn't get, I missed out on a lot. I love my parents and I'm very thankful for everything, but like they didn't do it well. You know, that's the nicest way to, I'm, I'm like not nothing against them or to be disrespectful, just that side wasn't done as well. So I've always had issues learning. Like when it, there's a lot, I missed out on from traditional education, but luckily like not a lot of that is that important, but my dad was an entrepreneur and my mom never told me I couldn't do things. And that transformed everything for when I did want to do stuff. I wanted to learn how to play drums. Okay, do it. Want to learn how to ride a unicycle when I was 13 because I was fucking weird. Okay, do it. <laughs> my dad, my I went to work with my dad when I was like 13 or 14, like learning hard work, learning discipline, learning standards of, of completion of things. Like I think that's what those are the things that transformed who who I am more than like, oh yeah, I missed out on this history lesson or I missed out on how to do calculus or whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not using anything I learned in school. I know that. Granted, I just said I got D's and F's, but. Uh. <laughs> yeah. My son goes to a private school and he does not, they don't do any tests or anything. It's oh, basically wow. like child led learning kind of thing. I mean, they go into the woods and they learn how to like build fires and survive. That's dope. 
Yeah, it is. And they've got, you know, they have a huge like music room. They have theater. It's pretty fucking that. badass. That's yeah. real world stuff. That's, that's really actually gonna be useful. And he's doing really well. Hmm. I would not put him in the public schools over here. It's they're fucking kids are bringing like knives and uh, 12 years old um, and like mace and beating people up in the bathroom. Wow. Like it's scary. no shit. Wow. Yeah. That's in Maine? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. See, I don't, I don't, I don't have kids. Oh, and speaking of that was the other thing that caused an uproar on social media. Um, I was very open about my vasectomy and holy shit. What you probably heard was the advice you give. You, you don't have kids. You wouldn't understand. I'm sure you hear that a lot. Oh yeah, absolutely. But then I also have single moms and dads that work on my coaching right. staff. I'm like, okay, well, let's ask this person. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. Let's ask him. Let's ask her. Or uh, we interview a lot of clients, a lot on the podcast, like clients who are just like kicking ass just for inspiration and just to showcase what we do and stuff. Um, we'll get them on the podcast. And like, we're talking like single moms who don't make much money and who like work like overtime every week. And all of a sudden they got everything they wanted. And then it's like, Oh yeah. What'd you say, Mrs. Jones? Oh, okay. It doesn't matter anymore. Got it. So. Right. Yeah. It's like, because those, those clients, maybe they, they, I'm not saying they would have, but they could have potentially said those same things in the past, but then go back to what we said earlier, they were just real with themselves and they stopped co-signing their own bullshit and they were ready to own it. I love that term. Co-signing your own bullshit. That is beautiful. (laughs) I'm 100% going to steal that. I'm going to steal that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, it goes back to, to accountability and ownership, right? Like one a saying that has been coming out a lot lately in like trainings and conversations is like just because something may not be your fault, but now it's your responsibility, right? Yeah. Like we we just bought this house like six months ago, and as soon as we moved in, there's like a, a water leak in the bathroom. It's not my fault. Like it was the other owner that had it. Like that is not my fault, but it's my fucking house now, in which mm-hmm. means it's my responsibility to fix it. So like I can I can hold space and and totally appreciate and understand the fact that like grew up with issues mom and dad were crazy with their diet stuff you aren't genetically gifted like we could put all the obstacles in front of someone that's not your fault but like it's your life now it it is your your responsibility 100% to handle that and then ironically when we start to take ownership and execute it's crazy what gets out of our way ironically you know what i mean mm-hmm. absolutely Hundred percent. You don't control necessarily sometimes what happens to you, but you absolutely control how you respond to it. At the 100%. end of the day, absolutely. We're more in control than we think. Mm-hmm. We really are. Mm-hmm. It goes along the lines of like what we say a lot too is like no one's coming to save you. Hard reality. Like nobody's going to do this for you. Nobody will. You have to do this for yourself ultimately. Absolutely. And it's just crazy though. Like I think people don't realize though, the, the magic that happens when we take radical ownership and accountability and dive all in on our actions. And it's like magic happens quite literally. Like we all see it, but too often, I think it goes back to too many people are outcome focused versus action focused. Cause we can't control a lot of the specific specifics of an outcome, right? Like in weight loss, we can't control how fast it's going to happen, where it's going to come off at it compared to your best friend. We can't control that, but we can go all in on our actions. Then ironically actions lead to outcomes, but our focus is just off. Mm-hmm. Actions lead to outcomes. Yep. That quick thing, like here, you know, they would rather buy like all the supplements in the world because it's delivered right at your front door. Mm-hmm. Then you know, maybe invest in yourself and in coaching because you actually have to do the actual work. Do oh, stuff. God. Oh shit. Yep. Yeah. Well, I think it goes back to like if we dig that deeper, it's not that they're a lot of people want to buy just the result, like the quick fix result, like the detox or the cleanse or the, the, the water weight drop overnight or whatever, but they're not buying the skill set that now then they can go create the result. Cause like at the end of the day, that's what coaching is doing. Like, yeah, the, the result's going to be there, but we're really changing them at the core of who they are, right? We're giving them skill sets. We're teaching them and we're changing the, their character. And then ironically, you become a different person. You get what they get now. Then your results change, but everyone wants to say the same shitty version of them and then get but the thing that I've been saying a lot lately is we don't just get to stay the, have the same shitty identity, stay the same shitty version of ourselves and get this thing up here. We have to become a higher level person that gets that, you know, we don't just get it's who do we have to become who gets. Yes. <laughs> um, oh, cool, dude. This always happens to us. <laughs> <laughs> Can talk to you guys. Beth and I just want to do this all day, every day. So. Chat with fun people. I love it. Jared uh, or Beth, is there anything you want to know about Jared before we start kind of doing our pleasantries here? Truth or dare. <laughs> truth or dare. Oh, <laughs> truth or dare. Or we do overrated, underrated, rapid fire. Do it. You start. Oh, God, <laughs> of course. Okay. Um, underrated, overrated, carb cycling. Overrated. Overrated as fuck. Uh, overrated, underrated, burpees. 
over <laughs> so overrated holy fuck overrated as fuck <laughs> the amount that you'd have to pay me to go do burpees right now is ridiculous i'm not doing them <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i just had to say that because the amount of people that lose their fucking minds when i say burpees suck is so hilarious to me they're like yeah. what do you mean it's the best right. overall exercise ever i'm like are you fucking kidding me are you diving bullets Right. <laughs> what, how is that functional? Like, what is that helping you? Training improve? for war? What are you doing? You got a shitty push up and a shitty vertical jump. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> or you could just do real push ups and get better at those. And you could do some squats and you could do some jump work and yep. get really good at all. Of those Absolutely. <laughs> Overrated, underrated, inclined treadmills. I think the idea behind like the stereotypical inclined treadmill, overrated as fuck, but just walking on the treadmill, underrated. That is a great answer. That's a great answer. Yeah. Like walking is fantastic, but like we've all heard the old like 3.5 at miles an hour at a, at a, at a, at a whatever, what, whatever pace burns. What No, incline so that walking, part of it's overrated. Yeah. Overrated, but walking treadmill vibes underrated as fuck. Oh yeah. There we go. Underrated as fuck. Um, let's see. Overrated, underrated pineapple pizza. Properly rated. Mm. Properly rated. I won't, I won't order it. I won't be like mm, pineapple pizza sounds good, but like I would absolutely smash it. Like <laughs> I'm in agreement my, there. <laughs> my wife likes it. So maybe that's why, because my wife loves a pineapple pepperoni pizza. So whenever we order pizza, we usually get like half that, then half like all the meat that I can possibly handle. Deep right. down, so. you like and you like eating one of those pieces of pizza though, don't you? I have low standards when it comes to food. <laughs> I, that's it. I just don't have high standards. I'm just like, I'll eat I it. wouldn't turn it away either, but I probably definitely would not order it. Right. That's where I'm at. So I think it's properly rated for the most part. Okay. Overrated, underrated, being outside. Uh, underrated, severely underrated, more underrated than ever. Vitamin N. Yeah. Vitamin Sorry. N. I like that. I think Beth, that was you that coined that one, aren't you? Or vitamin I don't N. know if you coined it yourself, but that's how I heard it. I did. Wait, what? What? Vi vitamin N? Vitamin nature, vitamin N. Oh, I got it. I was so, I'm like, fuck, I'm going to look like an idiot. What the hell is vitamin N? <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, then I called, I was like, vitamin I, which is ibuprofen. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Take a little vitamin I with your vitamin N. And Tools we'll of the that. trade. That's well, amazing. Especially when you're hiking Katahdin. Yes, mm. for sure. For sure. Um, <laughs> let's see. Overrated, underrated. Uh, fuck, deadlifts severely underrated severely mm -hmm. yeah why are they underrated i mean we we do it a lot like imagine if every time you bent over you're fucked right um, see i my brain i want to go to like the extreme with it um like like most people think like yeah groceries like if you can't bend over good luck getting your groceries like what if your house is burning down and your partner's passed out and you're just like wow i have to leave you there peace like i think that it's i think learning to do it severely i think it's important to be honest um um, I think it's not just underrated, but it's, it's, you're, you're doing yourself and potentially others a disservice not being able to do it. I, I I've been saying for years that I think if people started practicing from the age 40 till the day they die, even lightweight, even whatever, not like maxing out deadlifts and squats, I think nursing homes would lose the majority of their population. Because, oh yeah. I mean, the number one reason people go to nursing homes is because they can't get off the toilet. Yeah. It's because they can't go to the bathroom on their own. But if from the age of, let's say, 40, 50 to the day you die, that's when you start doing deadlifts and squats, even body weight. I think nursing homes would lose half, lose half their population. Mm -hmm. I agree. There was a coach the other day that made a tweet style post. They said, talking about his his opinions of the future. And he said, uh, doctors of the future will prescribe strength training. I fucking hope so. I'm in firm agreement with that. And in fact, People like Dr. Uh, Spencer Nadolsky are doing that. Mm -hmm. And they're they're kind of leading that movement, I think. I love that. Love, yeah. love Dr. Spencer. Mm -hmm. Totally. He's great. So, Jared, where can people find you if they want to check you down on social media website? Um, and are you uh, promoting anything right now? Yeah. So one of the biggest focuses is my podcast. So Beth was just on the show just like a couple of weeks ago. Every, everyone flipped shit on it. Like everyone in my, like I have a Facebook community. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, I love Beth for Hakka. Holy fuck. Aww. So yeah, that, that went over very well. So I have my podcast. It's called Dieting from the Inside Out. Um, it's everywhere. Or uh, we just launched my podcast site called dietingfromtheinsideout.com. All the, all the full length videos of the interviews are there. Um, we have all the shows transcribed. So people who don't want to listen to the whole hour long episode or whatever, we have the, all the transcriptions in like a blog format. So people who can like speed read and just that go is that. incredible. Uh, my, my media guy was who, uh, who suggested that and and I love it. And and then it SEOs well, like for like Google and marketing and yeah, stuff. So, yeah. so dining from the inside, dining from the inside out.com is where that's at. 
But otherwise, if you want, you know, my foul mouth and thoughts in your day to day, uh, I'm on the shorter form po- platforms too, like Instagram and TikTok at real Jared Hamilton. Um, the real the Jared. One. Not the fake one, the real one. <laughs> so, <laughs> Okay, congrats on the uh, production with the podcast. Seriously, Appreciate I know it, that's man. no small feat. We're currently trying to grow like a team and everything to help us th- get to that point too. So I know that's like a lot of work and mm-hmm. consistency and heart, um, just being patient and trying new things. So well done. I love man. it. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's, it was a big move, but I think it, but it was uh, 2022 was the year of like, really like get working on the business and not in the business and delegating and, and doing only like what I call Jared things. So now I have the time and mental capacity to like be banging out bigger episodes and, and then all those things. And then it's, it's, it's been going over really well. Um, like a lot of our clients come from there and then it's setting up other bigger opportunities down the future with like speaking and things like that. So I, I love it. That's awesome. Nice. Congrats again. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me guys. This is fucking dope. Yeah. Hell yeah. Anytime, yeah. man. Got Beth in my lookalike. I love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks again. Thanks, All right, Jared. Thank you. See ya. Peace. Hope you enjoyed this episode. So why not share it with a friend who needs to hear it? Send us a DM on Instagram or email us at cutthecrappod at gmail.com and join our Patreon at patreon.com slash cutthecrappodcast. As always, we appreciate you and thanks for being here.